we're back. Just like that, another episode of the Grunge Bible Podcast. My name is Ethan Shalloway, and I'm joined, as usual, with Chris Delona. And we have a special guest today alongside of us. His name is Drew McFadden, and we're really excited to have our first ever interview on the Grunge Bible Podcast. Chris, Drew, how are we doing today? Fantastic. I could not be better. It's the best day of my life. So we've been looking forward to having a a guest on our podcast for a while now, Chris, and we're finally doing it. Yeah, absolutely. And I think as it happens, this is uh, the first time I've ever interviewed somebody in my life. So if it's bad, that's why. (laughs) (laughs) Drew, how you doing over there? I'm great, dude. I'm uh, looks like I'm in like a police station, like interrogation room, but, uh, yeah, I'm really getting some uh, some some interrogation vibes right here. You just got yeah. one of those one of those hanging light, light lamps above you, and then and then we we'd be set. And uh, so this is actually the second time that we're recording this. The first time Drew was uh, in and out of uh, picture because you you were an invisible man back then. So we had to we had to do it again. And yeah, I just yeah, yeah. liked it, liked doing it so much. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So a little yeah, bit of background. Was, was i say a little bit of background. Drew and I go way back, and we were in a band in high school together. And we all went to school in Pittsburgh together, the three of us. And now Drew is actually doing our engineering and producing our podcast. So small world, uh, dating back about 20 years, basically, for the two of us and like about 10 years for you, Chris. I mean, it's yeah, maybe, most maybe of, 10 uh, years, but pretty significant great. Significant chunk of, of life here. Yeah, I remember... Drew, we met, I visited Pitt when I was a senior in high school and Ethan was, <laughs> Ethan was showing me around, I remember. And, uh, I think we ended up going to your dorm room to hang out. And Ethan was like, yo, like, <laughs> it's my friend Drew. Like we play music together. He's a cool dude. And we met then. And then, you know, I would see you obviously for, you know, the, the one year that I was actually at Pittsburgh, but yeah, that was, that was a long time ago. Yeah. I remember that. I remember meeting you. I remember that pretty well. Actually. Yeah. I was like this like wide eyed senior in high school who like didn't know like what side of the bed to piss on and like whatever was going on there and (laughs) you guys showed me the ropes and it was it was it was important (laughs) we did did the best we could yeah what's funny me and chris have in common is our first dealings with ethan was him showing us around the school (laughs) oh really you too (laughs) yeah because like when i moved there in like second grade he uh oh man he, he was the dude who was like you know, I was, I was, uh, he took me under his wing. So how did, how do you do with you? Cause my experience was terrible. I almost didn't go to pit because of him. <laughs> uh, I think I, yeah, I think I annoyed him. Cause I was just like, dude, when the fuck's lunch? You yeah, know, right? like, it's like, like I'm, just, I'm trying to, trying to eat and trying to get the hell out of here. Like, I don't know. I, you know, I was just, I don't know. Yeah. I think I asked a lot of questions. And, I do uh, that a lot for people. I feel like I show people around all the time. That's that's one of my strong suits. <laughs> yeah, it's a good I, skill. It's a marketable I, skill to have. <laughs> yeah, I sell people on schools and elementary schools and whatnot. <laughs> and you can make a living off of that. So that was that was back in Pittsburgh. And Drew, you're currently uh, you live out in California now. So how did how did that happen? Yeah, man, I'm in uh, sunny LA. Um, I landed a job. Well, yeah, start over. Um, as Ethan said, we've been playing music together forever. I, uh, it's my number one passion in life for sure. Um, I, you know, thought that I was going to be, go to law school or something sort of, you know, normal or whatever, but, uh, you know, life has a way of kind of, you know, being a little unexpected and landed a job at a recording studio out here via a friend of a friend. And uh, yeah, man, been learning how to engineer and 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 what that whole world is for like the past two and a half years ish, almost mm-hmm. three years. So, and that's probably a kind of world that you know you said like you've been playing music forever, you've been listening to music forever, but like I feel like that's probably the kind of world that you don't even know anything about it until you get into it. So it's like you, you land the job, you head out to L.A. It's like you're set up in LA, new city, you know, you might know your coworkers, but other than that, you might not know anybody. And like, you probably show up to work, not having any idea what it is that you're doing right from the get go. How, mm-hmm. how hard was that? And is that, I guess, cause I bet it's an ongoing process for like your whole career, just learning. Big time. Yeah. I mean, I didn't know what an engineer was mm-hmm. until I even I'm got gonna be honest, I don't know what an engineer is either. So that's what I'm, <laughs> what my question is, uh, 
Can you explain engineering and mastering and producing and all those things for the people yeah. listening? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, no, but yeah, it, it was it was very sh- like overwhelming. You know, not get a job and you've zero idea what's happening other than just the art of it. You know, mm-hmm. uh, but yeah. So for people who don't know, engineering is there's a few different kinds. Um, but it's essentially, you know, the person who's actually recording the music, who is, uh, you know, mics everything up, gets everything sounding good, operates Pro Tools, is everything, you know, recorded. Most is recorded digitally now. Um, so there's, yeah, like a recording engineer. Uh, there's a mixing engineer, and they, they could be the same person. And that's like the person who mixes the song, mixes the record, and um, essentially what that is, is just like, you know, getting the balance of everything, um, EQ, compression, you know, all these sort of kind of creative choices that go into making it sound like how you hear it. Um, and then, yeah, a mastering engineer is somebody who it's the final guy on the, or girl on the song. And, uh, mastering is like, it's kind of hard to explain without, you know, really know what it is, but it's like, you know, they make it louder and, you know, kind of make sure that the whole album kind of is cohesive. If it's an album, you know, everything's like balanced. If one song isn't like, you know, 10 clicks too high or whatever. You yeah. Know, so you're just like, bro, shit, I mean, it's in the car. <laughs> yeah. You gotta, gotta turn that down a little bit. Or yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And then, uh, so that's like engineering. So that's what I've been doing is, is, uh, the, the recording aspect and mix in a little bit with my mentor as well. Um, and then there's producers. Uh, so producing is, a, can mean a few different things as well. So there's, you know, somebody who makes beats that they're a producer, uh, but also there's, you know, think of like a director of a film, you know, so there's like a producer in the room typically being like, Hey, why don't you sing, you know, this way instead of that way or, or yeah, just th- like things of that nature, you know? Yeah, I remember the first when you started transitioning. So basically, I, I mean, I don't want to speak for you, but um, we were playing music in college together a little bit. I was too busy. And then you had some other people. And basically, it got to the point where you wanted to keep doing music, but no one could keep up with the time commitment. So you started producing your own music for a while. Yeah. And then he would DJ all of our like all of our parties in college. And we'd make fun of him because we, you know, you just press and play <laughs> yeah <laughs> and he would always say how how much more goes into all of like the mixing of the music and the sound and and we never gave him any, any credit so he decided to move out to california to prove us wrong i guess <laughs> yeah, yeah that's so funny yeah um it's just press and play <laughs> <laughs> i think and that's, that's true though you know like when you think about it i think a lot of people just think like oh like you know a band's going in to record an album or an artist is going in it's like oh they're just going in the studio they're going to play and then it's ready the next day and like that's it yeah. you know the band plays and it's ready and you know there's i would say pretty much there's so much more that goes into it than you know anybody would know and it's so much more of a time commitment and there's so many people that have to be on hand like what you said i mean all of the different positions that you just named i, I don't think you know, like your average, you know, music car radio listener is not going to know all that stuff or, you know, wouldn't understand it. Certainly. I mean, I, I don't understand it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, <laughs> so many moving parts. It's wild. Uh, just having a peek into, you know, the short time I've been out here kind of work with some you know, pretty cool people and, and yeah. So and, uh, question about that, I was going to ask. Um, yeah. So why LA? Do you think that is I know LA has a, a rich music history. Do you think that it's uh, like a two part question? One mm-hmm. is the U S the best place to kind of learn music and kind of cut your teeth in the industry. And then New York versus California, like are those the only two spots that are going to be able to make it work at the time? I just kind of wanted to get in like why California and, and do you have to be there for this industry? Um, well, I've never worked outside of the U S but I imagine uh, I've I've had like a pretty big French artist come to the studio I work at. So um, I, from my inter just experience and just kind of deducing through observation, I think 
the U.S. is still kind of the John, you know, it's it's kind of the bee's knees still for a lot of for stuff. All, for all yeah, yeah, still leading the yeah. pack. Yeah. How um, New York versus L.A.? Yeah. New York. Unless um, you put another city up there, like maybe Chicago, I know has a really deep history too. Yeah, like I think, uh, depending on the town, so Nashville, there's a lot. Nashville, but yeah. Obviously, right. like, uh, country. Atlanta is really big Atlanta. with um, um, hip hop and stuff, uh, like R&B. Um, Memphis is huge for blues yeah, artists. Memphis has so, a great music tradition, yeah. yeah. Um, and New York, I, I think it has to do with, dude, just... It's so it's even more expensive in New York. So like we're you know, and just the, it's a totally different kind of city vibe. Like it's very you know, super super city where LA is like super spread out and it's not like skyscrapers, you know, right, throughout right. the whole thing. So it's just like I think more feasible to make a record here, you know? And just over the years I think that's just kind of how it's been and the weather's a drug so <laughs> yeah absolutely and especially like for you like growing up in pennsylvania where you know the sun doesn't shine for seven months out of the year you know going out to la that must be a pretty nice transition yeah yeah and it's so weird dude. like you move here and and so like i said um earlier maybe before we started recording but uh, a buddy of mine of ours uh just moved in with me Mm -hmm. And he came from Pennsylvania and he's, you know, wide, I, you know, eyes are wide with like his palm trees, you know, <laughs> it's like, holy shit. I've never seen one of those. Yeah. We're like, we're like 10 streets away from the, the beach too. So yeah, uh, he's like all stoked about it, but you know, I've been here for, you just get desensitized. It's such, such a weird thing about humans, you know, but mm -hmm. yeah. Like the, the LA mystique, like, it, it seems like it's definitely a real thing, you know, I mean, how much, how much art and how much, you know, um, subject matter has been dedicated to it over the years. Like, you know, there's obviously some truth to that, you know, and, and yeah. certainly when it comes to music, you know, with how much great music's come from Los Angeles and in the area and how much has been recorded there. And it's really cool. And it's probably cool for you to, you know, to find yourself playing a role in that now, you know, being the big music fan that you are and, you know, lifelong musician that you are. Yeah. I mean, I played on a stage that Jim Morrison played on, you know, just yeah, like you, like you don't get that in many places. Like that's yeah, yeah. like that. Yeah, it's wild, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's that is really cool. So, kind of throwing it back to your day to day job and life, why don't you kind of walk us through a typical day? So you like you work at um, you work with Tim Somfield. I don't believe that you mentioned that name yet, but uh, yeah. what's the studio called? And, and what time do you usually get in? And what time do you leave? Do you have any? semblance of time these days or do you just work 24 hours or how's how's it going you well, yeah. get, get sleep that often yeah um yeah so i, I tim sonfeld is my mentor and he's the guy who i knew from philly and you know got me the gig here um day to day depends on the client so it's just it's whatever they want um you know it really is the people industry still just like any business honestly at, at the end of the day um so it could be you know it's, it's not a it's not a nine to five so it's you're not getting there probably early in, in, in the sense of you know, in the morning or whatever but most people start you know 11 or 12 so if you're an engineer you get there an hour half hour before just make sure everything kind of looks good um and it, and it's whenever they're done, it, you know, especially like, cause I'm young lion, uh, you know, so I still am at the, uh, behest of, of the client. So, yeah. I mean, last week, uh, or yeah, like a few days ago sessions, I was there from 10 30 to the last night I got home at 3 a.m you're pulling some long hours and, and like you said like it's not really up to you at that point it's like if if if, if the person you know recording or making the music is they want to keep going like y'all probably got to keep going yeah and uh and this industry so cutthroat and there are 
there's lots of opportunity, but also not a lot of opportunity. So that you want to, and what I mean by that is like, if, if let's just say I was like, Hey dude, like we got to cut it, you know, he might not use me again, you know? Right. Yeah. He knows another engineer or, you know, whatever, but, um, so yeah, you really kind of, you know, against the wall in that sense. Yeah. And that's kind of one thing that I think <laughs> about when I think about Los Angeles all the time, you know, because it's like, it's such, it's so much the place where people go. And like you said, you know, there's so many people out there looking to, you know, get their foot in the door or, you know, progress their careers. And, you know, it's such a big town. So there's really a lot of opportunities, but it's like, when you get one, you want to hold on tight because, you know, that line probably stretches halfway to Chicago of people, you know, trying to, trying to step in and, and want what you have. So yeah, it's you know, think about how many years, kind of collectively, it takes to get you know that opportunity. It's not, it's you know, it's a build up. Just, just again, like everything. But uh, but yeah, man, it's it's wild. Yeah. Yeah, that's really cool. So, um, kind of talking about the process and everything, are you able to discuss like any of the the artists that you've been able to work with in your time there, or is that yeah. something that they can go on record? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, well, the the session that I was doing just uh, the other day um, was with uh, this guy Don Devore, who's pretty uh, pretty successful engineer producer, mm-hmm. and he, he does like kind of in- interesting sort of DJ sets all over the world, honestly. And uh, he he is in a band with Mickey Madden, who is uh, the bass player for Marine Five. Oh, okay. So I've been engineering uh, their stuff with them now for like a year and a half ish. Yeah. Um, uh, and they're cool. They, they're, uh, their band's called Collapsing Scenery. It's actually pretty sick. It's very um, interesting, almost like experimental. Nothing like Maroon 5. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Expanding and, the horizons there. <laughs> and Mickey's a really cool dude and, uh, and a really good musician. And he, he's the singer for that band, which is kind of cool. Oh, okay, yeah. So kind of you know inhabiting a different role there, obviously, than what he would be with yeah. Maroon Five. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I worked with them. I worked. Uh, there's a record uh, coming out by Billy Davis Jr. and Marilyn McCoo. They were mm-hmm. part of uh, Fifth Dimension, very famous. Oh, okay, artist. yeah. Um, they got a cool record that I, me and Tim worked on. Uh, it's a Beatles cover album. Um, in in like you know, R and B kind of. Oh, that's really cool. I, I, yeah. I, th- I think I would dig that. That sounds super cool. Yeah. I think they have two, two singles out right now. It's like, uh, two blackbirds, one of them. And that's uh, nice. pretty well. That's gotta Over be cool. Out. Love that song. Yeah. Obviously that's, and, my, uh, that's probably my favorite Beatles song. Yeah. 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 Blackbird. They, their version's pretty cool. It's pretty pretty. Um, and then, um, you know, me and Ethan have been playing stating. So, yeah. probably for 15 years or whatever Since and i got the beginning of Easter. time yeah I got oh really Easter, which was really cool pretty yeah that's cool. that's epic that's i guess yeah we played satan so pretty much that was our that was like our our go-to that's one that we always pulled out when we needed a song yeah so yeah you worked with them on uh on multiple songs or, do you, or when they come in was it an album how's that how that shake out yeah yeah it's for their upcoming album van weezer um, yeah, and we I think we did so like when we, yeah it, when your people are making records especially um, user does <laughs> um, you know they're not going to do not necessarily like finish a whole song uh, you, know, you know at a time because um, with people's schedules you know the bass player might not be able to, you know, he can only come in this day, that day or whatever. Um, so you just like get it in, get what you can done. And, uh, so we did, yeah, we worked on a few different songs. We, we, the way that they did, it, I don't know if this, this was like the way that they always do it, or if this was just this record, but, um, rivers, he records like all the guitar parts at home. And um, it's called reamping, but you you can essentially put the signal that he recorded, you know, in Pro Tools through an amp and re-record it. Oh, um, really? 
yeah yeah so that's how we did a f- bunch of guitars uh at red star that way mm-hmm. um red star recording us in the studio that i nice. worked at and worked with weezer at um which is pretty sick because so he just you know he just in his pjs <laughs> just records some dope zoomed, guitar licks he zoomed you know? in yeah and he just sends it off to his engineer and uh yeah we just we, yeah, we just did that we did a bunch of uh background vocals i, I got to meet um the guitar the guitar player and uh bass player scott and uh and uh what's his name i forget the guitar player's name brian brian oh, Steve gilbert mm-hmm. yeah brian gilbert i don't know his last name but yeah brian's funny man i was uh awesome. That's it, he was he was doing a, a background vocals and um I was like setting setting the mic up for him, and he's like, he kind of talks like this, um, <laughs> you know. And, and he, I was I was like doing something over there, and he's like, I think this is gonna have to come up a little bit higher. And I was like, oh yeah, sure, right, like be right over, you know, get fix that up for you. So I finish doing what I'm doing, come over, and I'm like adjusting the you know the height of the mic for him, and I'm like, oh yeah, like how's this feeling? Is that is that comfortable? But some people like to, like sing up some people you know mm-hmm. whatever um and he's like yeah actually i think it's the best height i've ever had you know <laughs> look at that <laughs> yeah this there is you bizarre. go that's he's amazing like, he's, he's, he's a interesting uh guy yeah wasn't the like, best height huh <laughs> that's going down that's going down on the resume right there because you're definitely the the only person that he's ever said that to in a recording studio <laughs> bizarre <laughs> that's amazing so you know with working you know really with the the nitty-gritty and the details for music and obviously like you said sometimes possibly for like 16 or 18 hours in one sitting um do you still enjoy listening to music outside or is there like a blend of like here's work and here's pleasure. And like, sometimes it's like, man, like I've listened to so much music in so much detail today that I just want to go home in silence. Like, do you, do you still listen to music for pleasure frequently? And like, what are you listening to if you do? Um, yes. Uh, um, if I'm listening to something, um, it's usually something I'm working on. Yeah. Or, or, uh, I love classical music, so I listen to a lot of classical music. Mm-hmm. Whenever I'm in the car, it's basically just on 91.5, which is the classical station out here. Um, I, but, I, I, but I keep up on like you know pop music and stuff just because. Uh, um, oh, did you upgrade this? Looks like it. Um, I keep up on like, you know the trends, and I love I love dance music and stuff too. So okay, yeah, I mean, like you've you've probably like you know how many different genres you touch. Obviously, for work, it's like you know you're not really deciding you know what comes through the door and what you work on and then it, it probably helps to be able to kind of be up to date on on everything and and even just as a fan too of music and and as a musician yourself, I, I think probably coming from somebody who's not an experienced musician, you know, once you're a musician, like you're probably able to appreciate so many different more styles of of music and music art you know uh, because you kind of un- maybe understand the process a little bit better mm, yeah or or you can even look even look uh more down on it you know <laughs> <laughs> it's like wow this thing really sucks because i know how bad of a job they did i knew it i knew yeah. it was bad <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like uh yeah you can even get more enraged listening to something so, um yeah, that's a question that I had actually. So now that you've had, you know, two or three years under your belt now, are there any records or songs like from your youth that you loved and now you're just like, they did a really shitty job with this? Like, yeah, this is not this... as good as I once thought. Um, like, what are you going to say? <laughs> I was going to say, like Nickelback, <laughs> like Nickelback and Creed, we need to know a lot of people like them, then they don't like them. Is it true? Are they bad, or do they actually do good things? This is an expert witness right here. <laughs> As in, with, with a trained professional ear, you can tell us <laughs> if it's good or not. Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I know he's. I know he's a Nickelback and Creed fan. Definitely a Creed fan. We've played. We've I played Creed. Creed. We've yeah. played. Who doesn't? Who doesn't? We've played them? higher together. Yeah, that I know. My first show that I ever went to. It's Creed. Oh my god. Yeah. 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 That is amazing. I'm jealous. <laughs> um, 
kind of uh, back, back to the question though. Is there is there some stuff that you uh you kind of can look back on and be like, you know what? Um, uh, well, one thing that always sticks out in my mind is <laughs> uh I remember listening to, like the Black Crows. Uh I'm like, a big Black Crows fan, so yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm buckled in. I'm I'm ready to disconnect it's, you from the call. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like uh Remedy did like killer song right yeah oh that's great but i always knew there was something wrong about it like i was just like just the way the noise sounds Mm -hmm. i was like it's it's this is not what i like um and that was before i knew what like the mix of a song was you know so if there was a different mix engineer it would sound same song but it would sound very different probably um and it's it's wild so once i learned like what the mix of a song was and how you can you know oh i want more reverb here or less reverb or or you know just the guitar is loud on this part or quiet at this part you know like their mix is way different than a nirvana mix do you think that is um specific do you think that like do artists come in now because i feel like if i you know i'm a drummer so I don't think about that stuff as much and, and I guess we haven't got I haven't gotten down the road that far in songwriting. But how much um how much do the artists that you work with tell you exactly what uh kind of reverb and, and certain levels are gonna sound like in a song? Because that seems like like you said, you get two different two very different songs depending on who mixes it. And I guess that why picking the right, you know, engineer yeah. is so important for these bands. Yeah, that's like a, it could be the, the engineer um, making those calls or the, the producer, yeah. or they could be one and the same, you know, producer and the engineer making those, like for uh, Collapsing Scenery with Don DeVore and um, Mickey Madden. Um, Mickey, he's he's in one of the biggest bands of all time, um, been a musician his entire life, sick musician, obviously. Yeah. But he doesn't have the engineer ear. So like he he's kinda like what you're saying, he like he he it's kinda like what he doesn't you know, if what you don't know doesn't like it doesn't matter to you then, right? So yeah. like you know, Don is the engine engineer producer, so he's kinda Yeah, it's kinda like more to like those details rather than just like the broad strokes, you know. We we talked about this a lot. Make the world go around both those types, you know. Yeah, we talked about this a lot. I mean, even when we sent you our first audio and you sent it back, and you know, we record it. And me and Chris listen back. And we're like, this is great. And we're like, this is great. This is awesome. Right? Like, we don't need you. And then you you <laughs> do your you work on it, and we're like, oh, like it sounds different. You know, I don't know what you did, but it sounds a lot better. Yeah. And I think that a lot of people can do the same way. That's how I get people to, to appreciate certain like coffee. Okay, there's really subtleties that. You don't know why it tastes better, but it does. And, yeah. you know, you don't, you, maybe you can't pinpoint it. Mm-hmm. Um, what kind of, so uh, another question to kind of build on that, what artists are really good at that? Like what musicians have like an engineer ear? Off the top of my head, I think that if I had to guess that Beck has a really good engineer ear and kind of is, it plays a part in that because his music is really deep in that way. I, I feel like it's super... I mean, he's kind of crossed a lot of uh, genres and just has like, he's like all up and down. So I feel like he would be really good. I don't know yeah, if there's think, any others. I think I've noticed like, uh, not not to, I'm, I'm not being biased because I'm one of them, but guitar players seem to have more technical ears just because part of playing guitar is finding sound, yeah. like your sound or whatever, you know, so you learn what, you know, how to make changes to a signal, you know? Um, mm-hmm. So I've noticed like uh, a lot of guitar players are become engineers as well. Um, but na- like, I don't know off the top of my head, a name of somebody. I mean, Don, like Don DeVore, he, like, he's a guitar player, uh, engineer, Tim Sonifo, guitar player, engineer, Dave Kalish, the owner, guitar player, engineer, you know? Mm-hmm. The trend 
Yeah, that, that totally makes sense too, because I mean, how nuanced guitar playing can get, you know, even just with the tone and, you know, different pedal combinations and any, you know, you really have so much of an ability as you do for a lot of instruments, but the guitar particularly to, you know, to engineer and to design your own sound, you know, before you even step in to a recording studio and, and you know, you get producers working on it. Yeah. 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 Um, I think drummers are like the lead. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Take that, Ethan. You, you, you suck. You can say it. Yeah, you can say it. It's, uh, gotcha. it's very... Well, I was going to say it because you have, you have different guitars that sound differently. And yeah, they have a very specific type of guitar solo that comes out of... Like drums, I mean, you can... You know, you can... Uh, uh, tune guitars differently. and st- I mean, I'm sorry. You can tune uh, drums mm. differently, but uh, not as much as guitars. And you can only do so much but it doesn't matter it's still drums are still cooler so they are they are <laughs> so speaking about um music and playing so you play and uh for everyone listening right now um whether they know it or not they've they've heard you play um however many times they've listened to this podcast because you are responsible uh for the intro and the outro music um, so if anybody didn't know that, uh, here's the man who created it. So do you, do you, do you kind of want to talk about that? Cause we've got a lot of people direct messaging us being like, yo, like who did that and where can yeah. I buy it and where can I listen to it? So well, and then people what's... comment and they're like, when you find out, let me know. And yeah, all really? this stuff. Yeah. So you've got some, you've got some fans there, Drew. That's cool. Uh, appreciate that. Yeah. Well, grunge Bible podcast needs a pretty sick theme song dude oh, so, yeah <laughs> yeah you know, like uh, <laughs> got my guitar right here <laughs> there it is hey, right here. Um, <laughs> this will be great i remember the first time that you sent it to me because we were talking about uh getting an intro and talking about all this stuff and and my brother has a podcast and you made an intro for him i'd rather you know have an intro and have something good and i remember you said to him on the first time listening very vividly it was like uh last summer or something that we got it for the first time mm-hmm. and uh i was listening to it in the car and with a pretty good stereo and it was uh it was just just that captured me right away and i could hear where our voices come in i could hear it and i was like oh yeah this is gonna be spot yeah. on yeah 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 it's like uh it's kind of an easy chord progression but it's very like actually chris Wait, before you play, when when he when he picks it out, tell me if it reminds you of a song because I I had instantly had a song and I was like, no wonder I was like, no wonder our followers like this intro. And, and All right, yeah, let's see if let's, she let's can hear. pick it. I, I actually thought when he played it yesterday the other day for me, I was like, is that? And then he's like, no, this is your intro. And I was like, oh, crap. <laughs> come on, Ethan, know your subject matter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like so, typically, like for uh, this key. You have like a, a major, I don't know how many listeners are like musicians, but it's uh, instead of having like A major, G major, D, you do an A minor. It's just like super grungy. I don't know why, mm-hmm. but it totally takes you back to like the 90s somehow. But You know? Like, yeah. It's just, it's sick. yeah. So we just had our first unplugged concert ever. So eat yeah. shit MTV. Um, so that songs great. that that reminds me of. I don't know what you were thinking, Ethan, but I I'm a little biased because I saw somebody else comment this, but I totally hear it. Um, somebody somebody thought that it was like uh, an alternate version of Down in a Hole by Alice in Chains. Is that is that what you thought too? <laughs> yep, that's the same one. <laughs> that's exactly what I thought. I was like, that's amazing. <laughs> I was like, damn. I hope he gets it, so I don't sound like an idiot. Yeah, no, 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 I bailed you out. No, I it was t- down in a I hole. Totally it was does. like yeah, down in a hole. <laughs> but yeah, man, like we've had a lot of people ask about about that. So I guess like the next question, um, because I, I think it's awesome, obviously, and a lot of people do. Um, is is there ever a chance that uh the that it'll be it'll be finished and, and listenable to to people, even just as a, as an instrumental or anything? Like, I think some people are interested. We can make that happen. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, so I, I think I need to record some drums for. Are we? Should we start a band, guys? Did we just? <laughs> did we just start a band? <laughs> yeah, uh, that could that could totally happen, man. Yeah, I we mean, could do something cool with it. I think, and mm-hmm. at least at least put it on. I think we kind of it would definitely be something that we we could post for everybody. 
uh, yeah. yeah, maybe extend it a little bit and make it into something. Who knows? Yeah, that's oh, really yeah. cool. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's, a, I don't know. Um, yeah, it turned out all right, if I don't say so. Yeah, I would certainly, yeah. certainly say so. This so far, it's, so far, it's going really right. well. Yeah, nobody's, nobody's sent us, people send us hate messages about damn near everything that we do. We haven't gotten any hate messages about that. We've only gotten complimentary messages. So, yeah. Um, well, that's too kind of them. Yeah, appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Probably because the people that don't like us aren't the ones listening to our podcast. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's what we always ask say. For the people, the people that leave us bullshit comments are probably not uh, yeah. looking. And for... if you are listening right now, we got you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, got uh, it's over. Got you. <laughs> got. So, uh, last question, Drew, or maybe not, but if you could go say, um, if you could go back and maybe do it a little differently, the transition from uh, musician, producer, engineer. And where you are now? I mean, you. How long have you lived in LA now? Uh, in Oct October is when I got out. So it'd be like three, three years in October, so two and a half years. Three years in October, um, and you had four years in Pittsburgh, or maybe uh, five years. Um, if you could go back and kind of redo the timeline, or do it a little differently, knowing what you know now, what would you do differently? Or if somebody's thinking about making that leap, was it the best thing you've ever done? Moving to California, like mm. they say. Mm. or what uh it's the best thing that you could do if you want to work as an engineer yeah uh what i would change is if you want to be an engineer i recommend going to school for it not going to school uh to be a political scientist is that uh, your major are you are you poli sci major yeah yeah i'm i'm a sociology and criminal justice major so yeah you know, very, very applicable towards, uh, you know, the fields that we're in. Yeah. <laughs> Mine's uh, commu community and leadership development, if anybody's wondering. So there we go. We're, we're, we're three for three. Th these are all great. <laughs> we all have degrees. All yeah. useless. Yeah. Yep. They can't take that away from us. Yeah. Um, uh, so, yeah, it was definitely just on the fact of when, if you go to school for it, you can, you know, you're networking with people. You probably get an internship, you know, in that field super helpful <laughs> uh yeah you know i got a little bit lucky in a sense not that i believe in luck but um i don't out. either yeah yeah <laughs> uh you know i i was uh playing guitar as you know in, in philly and stuff and just looking on craigslist for for gigs and yeah you know, we me and ethan used to play during the summers but then you you'd be away and doing whatever and I was like, still, I got to play. Um, so it's just kind of like who, who I knew, you know, meeting the right guy at the right time sort of thing. But, uh, but flip side, wouldn't recommend coming to LA really at all, unless you are in entertainment or something like that. It's a, a weird town, <laughs> really bizarre town. Uh, especially like this past year has been like pretty not great but yeah. i do hear that i feel like i do hear that from people that live in la they're just like yeah i wish i didn't live here but you know i gotta yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i have like, to yeah and, and i feel like there's a lot of people who went to la to pursue those things like several years ago or 10 15 years ago who are now tired of other people going to la to do the exact same thing that they did like, everyone's got a dream <laughs> yeah i know we've yeah. heard some people say that before <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, the air quality is terrible for you. Can't drink the water. It's Damn. really uh, where you want to go. <laughs> but at Sheesh. the same time, it's pretty cool too. Yeah, strikes and gutters. It's got it's good and it's bad. Strikes and gutters. That's what it's strikes all about. Strikes and gutters. I like that. <laughs> yeah, throw, throw in a, uh, throwing in a big Lebowski <laughs> reference. Uh, that's that's a part of the uh, the head cannon uh, right there. But yeah, that is awesome. So Drew, we normally close down the yeah. podcast with a little uh, song of the week um segment here so um it's exactly what it sounds like just a song this week that you might be listening to and that you might like um that's so worth just, worth sharing yeah oh, i'll share one for you yeah That'd you go great. first and then, and then chris and i will go yeah i always <clears throat> feel so much pressure when it comes time for song in the week um song of the week excuse me um yeah. because i feel like i have to give a good um a good recommendation because the people think highly of us for some I was reason say, but believe it or not chris people value our opinions yeah and, i don't know why and I right now we're understand it. we're curating a playlist that will one if we title it songs of the week uh it'll 100 percent be 
uh, I don't know, sought after. People are going to yeah, like it'll, that. It'll, it'll be rocking. And so. then people are like, should you put my band on there? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, hey. we, sound, we sound just like Soundgarden. I promise. Um, <laughs> and we're a mix between Soundgarden, Alice in Chains, Mud Honey, and the Melvins. Yep, we're everything. <laughs> Dude, you guys talk about Mud I've never heard of them or heard of them. All right, that's it. You're, 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 you're we're never having and you back that, on. That's it. Actually, <laughs> I, we did. We had. We just had an email, Chris, and it was from somebody, and they asked. Yeah. Uh, they asked who Mud Honey is and why everybody says that Mud Honey is the real, uh, the only real grunge band. And he's from a different country. So. Yeah, he's from Israel. So we're gonna have to, we're gonna have which, to do an episode on that. Which is really bizarre because someone from the other countries and how they're connected to, you know, Seattle from '88 to '94 is beyond me. <laughs> yeah, and and somehow we're a part of that connection, which is a weird level of responsibility for us that I don't think I'm prepared for. Um, yeah. But I'm stuck with anyways. But yeah, we're gonna have to. Uh, that's we can that's, do an episode on. Mud yeah, Honey. we'll we'll do an episode on that one. So we're gonna force you to listen we'll, to the podcast. Well, yeah, you have to you listen can... to it anyways. You produce the damn thing. But... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I You'll hear get... them all seven times. Yeah. <laughs> I, oh, I also want to say earlier, I was just, when you asked Drew if he listens to other music, I was gonna be like, I can speak for him and say that he doesn't. I hung out with him a few times. And that man always takes the damn ox cord and puts on the Peanuts theme song. Trying to like, you know, I'm like trying to show new songs. He's like, I got a new one for you. <laughs> no, no, you, need, and it's, you need that little dirty guy on the piano, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, this <laughs> song was written in 1570. You know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Bill, Billboard to, uh, Hot 100 uh, for 37 weeks in 1671. <laughs> Uh, yeah, if you want to introduce me to something new, how about the Baroque period? You know, <laughs> <laughs> it's like this is gonna this is gonna knock your socks off. <laughs> yeah, I asked my buddy, I'm like, how's how's Drew doing? And he's like, yeah, he's doing good. All he does is play damn classical music, though. <laughs> yeah. So does this mean that we're gonna get a classical song? song <laughs> <laughs> well, I was, I was, like you got my hopes up. <laughs> I was between the new. Uh, you ever hear that movie, uh, Tenet? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was gonna. I was gonna suggest that whole soundtrack. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Not, which would which would fall right in line with an engineer's ear to pick a soundtrack. That that, that soundtrack is excellent. Really oh, good. Yeah, yeah. Who, is, Ludwig, who produces Ludwig, uh, what? Who produces it? Ludwig uh, Gors Gor Granson. Of course, Gorenson? his name is Ludwig. <laughs> yeah, it's gotta be. But he's cool too because he's he did a uh, uh, Childish Gambino's uh, Grammy Award winning <laughs> album. Oh. Like he does like a bunch of different stuff. He did uh, the score for Black Panther. Uh, nice. Marvel movie. Yeah. He's, Dude, he's, that's he's that stuff blows my mind. I mean, I know I know I know about, you know, writing music a little bit, but like as far as uh orchestra and big sound and, and scores and whatnot, that stuff is beautifully done. It's really amazing. I know, dude. Yeah. Yeah, but that's so, is that, is that what you're you're <laughs> suggesting? New song, new song. Right? <laughs> uh, That's the new one right there. <laughs> um, no, I'm going to shamelessly suggest the remix I did a few months ago. Uh, Absolutely, yeah, fuck uh, that shit. Flower bed, Godeo remix. It's uh, by Delicio, the artist. Cool guy from Pittsburgh. Like, we're gonna we're gonna share that. It's gonna be great. Oh, yeah. Sick, thank you. Awesome. Um, Ethan, do you, do you want to go next or do you want me to? Uh, it doesn't matter. All right, mine's, matter. mine's pretty underwhelming. Um, I just posted it today uh, on the page. So today's today's April. What's today? The eighth, April 9th, Excuse me, Friday. My April song. 9th. My I, song. I also just posted recently. Oh, there so we go. Perfect. Just rehashing. Uh, no bells on Sunday by the Mark Lanigan Band. I think it came out in 2012. I like Mark Lanigan. I think you guys all know that by now. Uh, that is my song of the week. That's Sweet. awesome. Dude, that reminds me. That, that name reminds me of this band that. We worked with. They were called the Old Man Dinner Band. I feel like <laughs> just based off of that name, I need to listen to them. Yeah, I'm in. They, I'm a fan already. I've yeah. never heard of them before. What but. kind of music are they play? Uh, good music. You know, not you know, kind of uh, Old Man Dinner Band. Kind of <laughs> you know, That's they, good. They are their own genre. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's awesome. All right, Ethan, um, round us out here. Take it, take us home. All right. Uh, so I was had some nice weather this 
week. So I was playing some my go to if I'm not listening to classic. If it's nice weather, I like classic rock, I like jam bands or I like nineties summer hits, summer hits of the nineties and whatnot. So and I was actually I was going through a playlist and I was listening to some of the, the lemon heads. Um it's a shame about Ray. Yes. Is the title. Yeah. It's the uh album title and and the title song. Uh so it's a shame about Ray and it's just a good summer song. I posted it I think yesterday and it's it's like two and a half minutes long and it's spot on. So great song. And uh, Lemon Heads? The Lemon Heads, yeah. Huh. They're like uh they were they were around in like the late eighties and early nineties and whatnot and they're just I got it from uh, Nuke Seattle. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. They have a they have a great page. They they reminded me of yeah, and he's 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 got some killer uh, '90s ro- alternative '90s rock and roll. Yeah, he's music he's, the, he's the man that you go for for the deep cuts to make it look like you know what you're talking about. Um, I do yeah. that with his page frequently um, because I actually don't really know much um, about the '90s, um, but I guess yeah. here we are. You know, we're 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 stuck with the '90s, so um, nice. yeah. But that is um, three great songs. Yeah, those are those are some really good songs there. So, like I like Ethan said, we're gonna get a playlist together and put all of the songs of the week together, and uh, we will enlighten all of the viewers and all of the listeners. But um, I think that'll put a lid on this episode. So here comes the most important part, um, where we thank all of our sponsors. And currently, the only sponsors that we have are us. Um, so if you're interested in taking advantage of this entrepreneurial opportunity, uh, please reach out to us. But otherwise, if you're a civilian without that type of um, uh, financial liquidity, I guess, uh, and, and you're interested in supporting us in other ways, um, absolutely subscribe to the podcast wherever you stream it. Uh, leave a review if you would like. You can subscribe and like our YouTube channel. All of the videos interact on there. Um, we have merchandise for sale. Links are on grungebible.com. And then The most direct way to support us is through our Patreon account, which is linked in the description of this episode, and it's also available on our website. So that'll help us, um, you know, produce this podcast, pay, aka pay our lovely producer uh, who we've just spoken to so far. Um, It'll help, you know, with the RSS feed upkeep and the website upkeep. So you guys are directly responsible for this podcast, and if you're enjoying it, if you're enjoying it so far, um, we would love it if you supported us in that way. I love my Grunge Bible merch too. There it is. Put that, not an ad. put that sucker on. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a little, it's, a little, it's a little small for my big old cranium. But, oh man, you're gonna have to find an right. alternative use for it. But yeah, yeah. that was that was totally not an ad. Um, that was. <laughs> hey, it, it can be an ad. You know, we're paying for it. So. Exactly. We can do. <laughs> yeah. This is our space. We can do what we want. Yeah. We paid for the space. But yeah, yeah, honestly, we're just we're uh, still very thankful for the feedback. We're loving it. We're having fun doing it, so we're going to keep doing it. Yeah, I mean, uh, we're 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 over a month into to doing episodes every week, and we haven't quit yet. So, uh, I think we're we're past the point, and and we're moving we're moving forward. So, if you're still with us, you know, we're really thanking you guys for listening. Uh, We've really enjoyed interacting with everybody um, on the page about the podcast, and we've gotten some great feedback. So, uh, any feedback that you have, we always love to hear, and uh, we're very thankful. As I said. Uh, for your attention the last hour or so yeah i want to say thanks thanks everybody for the love on the theme music if you uh if anybody out there needs an engineer i'm uh at godeo music on instagram and twitter i think uh instagram yeah. it's like uh ro- it's spelled like rodeo but with a g godeo. this is your guy yeah we'll, we'll 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 plug you um because people people ought to know if they're enjoying your your work uh even if they didn't know it now they know we can put a little uh, a little highlight and i'll say Godeo or producer or something we'll put you in our yeah whatever so you can you can live there as they say absolutely Perfect. But i think that'll do it for episode five of the grunge bible podcast so we'll be back uh same time next week that's right Thanks, here, come, here come the bastards here they come <laughs> all right guys rock and roll thank you all right y'all we'll Peace. see you later Peace.